What's good? We back with Motor City Sports Talk. Back, you know, being your football fix on another football this Sunday. But uh, we back. Go to Tate. I'll link an article in the description. Go to Tate. Would love to sign an extension with the Lions this summer or right now. And uh, you already know my stance on it if you don't. Um, I'm with just not re-signing him at all. I um, might, be, might be in the morning already. I know Detroit Lions fans love him, but a uh, receiver's come a dime a dozen, bro. I mean, I mean, depends on what number he, he you know, he's looking at. You know, if he is a kind, if it's a Lions friendly contract or a little bit more of a Lions friendly contract, I'm with it. But if it's something like he's trying to break the bank as a top ten wide receiver, I'm good. Dude is pushing thirty. I mean, you can develop young receivers, especially receivers that's as limited as him right now. He's not the deep threat that he kind of was in Seattle and early in Detroit. Um, you could tell he lost a step, and also that. He made a lot of critical mistakes. The year after Calvin left, he quit on the team. The Arizona game, I remember him quitting on the team. He had a lot of drops, a lot of run behind, get the first down, and then lose the first time run behind the line. He had a lot of fumbles, a lot of key drops on third down. Fans forget that stuff. I don't forget that stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In Pittsburgh, he had a critical drop to turn into an interception. You know, this year in Baltimore, he got the first down, ran behind the first down line. A few more games, he did stuff like that. The Atlanta Falcons game. Knee came down before he scored a touch. Now, how do you feel? You know? And, you know, he's a good receiver, but like I said, he's pushing 30. And what you must understand, certain positions in sports, and in the NFL to be particular, you can replace them for cheap. Receiver, slot receiver, you can replace that for cheap. You know, you can find somebody to play the third receiver role. But the reason why he is so critical at this point, and I think he could be way more effective, um, I'm going to tell you why. If we're going to keep him, which, like I said, I have no problem keeping him. I'm more with them not keeping him. I'm not paying him big money. If it's a if it's a, a team friendly contract, I'm with it. Or, you know, if it's more of a team friendly contract and he happy with it. For, for me, I'm not breaking the bank for another receiver. You know what I'm saying? It's just not gonna happen. They had Dama doesn't. You can find them in the draft. They can come and produce right away. Most receivers come and have an impact right away. But, you know, the reason why he hasn't really really been able to excel, I think, like he should have. And last year, he had only had, what, two or three hundred yard games. You know, and people going to say, well, it's because of this and that. You know, you want to say it's because of Jib Bob Cooter. Um, he's still back this year. You know, but I think, you know, if you do sign him, you know, resign him. Like I said, which I have no issue with resigning him if it's a team-friendly contract. But if you do resign him, um, the positives, the reason why he hasn't really thrived and his offense really haven't thrived as far as numbers and consistently – you know, getting first down and, and going to get uh, touchdowns is because Eric Ebron never held up his end of the contract, his end of the bargain. You know, he never controlled the middle of the field. If Ebron was able to be a, a great, a good, or even a, a adequate tight end, control the middle of the field and go deep in the middle of the field between the safeties, Golden Tate would eat a lot more underneath in, 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 those, in those little zig routes and those little out and in routes and slant routes. He would he would definitely be in there, be able to eat more than he has been. And by teams not having to worry about Eric Ebron, I mean, it hampered, it hampered his numbers. And I will say that. I, I'm real. I'm going to say that. Eric Ebron hurt him more, almost more than anybody on the team other than Matthew Stafford, you know, that Ebron really, really affected. Then you look at um, you look at a uh, lack of running game. You know, nobody had to even really bite on the play actions, even though Stafford statistically was a top five play action quarterback. But play action and the run game would definitely help Golden Tate, man. You know, those DBs that have to peek into the, the backfield and hit with his agility, quickness, you know, or moving laterally, however you want to say it, he definitely would, you know, be more dangerous. Um, and Jim Bob Cooter. Jim Bob Cooter does not know how to utilize Golden Tate on a consistent basis. Somebody like Golden Tate should be getting balls thrown at him like Wes Welker. And it's completely not Golden Tate's fault. Jim Bob Cooter's offense is stupid, man. It's stupid, you know. Since Jim Caldwell took over, it's been very, very bland. It's been very, very mundane. It's been no variety. It's been no flavor to the offense until the end of the year when he did that trick play that Philly stole from us. But, you know, it, it totally hasn't been Golden Tate's fault, you know. But at the end of the day, look at the situation that we're in, you know. Look at the situation. Same offensive coordinator. Okay, let's say Jim Caldwell was called holding him back, okay. If he was, and Jim Bob Cooter can, can actually, you know, draw some plays to make Golden Tate effective, Golden Tate should should, should be a 110-catch type of guy, man. Real talk. He's more athletic than Wells Welker. You know, and he's just quick. You know, they need to find a way to consistently get this guy the ball. 
Like I said, he do have his drops, but who don't have their drops? You know what I'm saying? He do make critical mistakes. He has quit on the team before. You know? But those were in losing dark situations. Now the Lions have a glimmer of hope with Matt Patricia. He's defending Matt Patricia on his felonious charge they're doing with him. Um, you know, Detroit News should be hit with a felony. But that's no here, no there. You know, he wants to be here. And like I said, if it's a, a Lions contract friendly, if it's a Lions contract, a Lions friendly contract, excuse me, then I will sign the Golden Tate. But other than that, if he got a certain number, you know, then, you know, fuck him. Excuse my language. He got to go. You know, I'm not signing him. And I said that from the beginning. It's too easy to find receivers to break the bank on receivers. And that's how he got to Detroit. That year he came to Detroit, it was a deep receiver class. I think it was Sammy Watkins um, and some other receivers that was in, in the draft. I can't remember all of them. But it was a lot of receivers in the draft. It was that Sammy Watkins draft. You know, Golden Tate had been passing around free agency, um, you know, a lot. You know, he ended up getting into Detroit. Um, Stosorn signed here. The reason he signed to Detroit, probably for less money than he wanted, is because it was a deep wide receiver draft. And you always can find receivers that can come in and do the job for cheaper than veterans. So you really, you really rarely see top receivers hit the free agent market, you know. You rarely see that, you know. Because then when receivers do hit the free agency market, it's because, you know, it's, they, they, they are easily replaceable. You can replace them easily. And that's what you got to understand. You can put, if you know how to evaluate talent, you, you can get some receivers. And you see that with the Chicago Bears. Last year, Chicago Bears didn't have no receivers. This year, they went out and got Allen Robinson, who's coming off an injury, who's, who's damn good, one of the top receivers in the league when he's healthy. In the draft, they got Anthony Miller, who's going to be a stud. They evaluated him. He, he He's a great receiver out of Memphis, and I think he got a lot of great potential. You know, they got uh, Trey Burton to play tight end. They really built their receiving core last. They got the defense now. They got the quarterback. They built the line before the quarterback. Now they want to go get their pass catchers because it's so easy to find pass catchers. You know, and you got to understand that with the Lions, man. Golden Tate been here, what, four or five years? We haven't won with them. Same thing with the Dominican Sue, Calvin Johnson, Stafford thing. Been there with them, like, <laughs> several years, didn't win nothing. Something has to change. You can't keep going to the season with the same roster, the same lineup. Something has to change. Like I said, people going to take it the wrong way. Like I said, you know, I'm with sign, re-signing Golden Tate if it's a Lions-friendly contract. If he's trying to break the bank in any way, shape, or fashion, I'm good with letting him walk. He's not an integral part to this team winning. I'm trying to tell you that. He's not. You can plug in another receiver in there and let the dice roll where they roll. You know, he's an older guy pushing 29, 30. I know he's a fan favorite. Oh, he got the most yak in the I don't care about the yak because the yak didn't help us get into the playoffs last year or win a playoff game the year before, so it doesn't matter, you know. But if he signs a, a Lions-friendly contract, I'm cool with it. Bring him back. Let's get him signed right now. And it might be in his best bet, best best, or less, or not in his best interest to sign right now, because next year he can have a great year and get more money. But you never know, we gone.